Silver the Hedgehog is a weird guy. He's also by far my favorite Sonic character. They used Trunks from DBZ as the basis for his personality and struggles, but also, in this version, Silver has to go back in time to kill Goku. I mean, kill Sonic. You see, Silver's from a desolate world, overrun with hellish flame, where every waking moment is unending torture. The source of the fire and misery is none other than Iblis, an immortal, invincible god which reigns over all with a limitless destructive potential. Silver and his companion Blaze succeed in fending off the beast time after time, but it always returns, always bringing yet more death and despair. Silver seeks a permanent end to this. He seeks freedom for his world and its people. He seeks absolution. Dreams of it, you might say. He knows the source of the flames is Iblis, but what's the source of Iblis? How do they put this thing down for good? Silver's so desperate for answers that when a mysterious benefactor appears and tells him everything he wants to hear, he listens without a thought. Silver must travel back in time, slaughter the hedgehog who summoned Iblis, and his world will finally know peace. Problem is, that hedgehog is Sonic the Hedgehog, and naturally Sonic has no idea why Silver wants to kill him. Silver, also quite naturally, jumps to a variety of highly emotional conclusions. Firstly, that Sonic summoned Iblis on purpose. Secondly, that killing him will avert Iblis's birth, rather than cause it. This is quickly set straight by Amy Rose, who does what she does best. She sympathizes with Silver's plight, while scolding him as necessary, and helps him come to a more introspective place. Silver has to seriously consider his naivete and blind pursuits of justice, where his morals really lie, what absolution truly costs. It's wonderful. He gets heartfelt philosophical talks with his mentor Blaze, and the differences between their thinking come to light. Blaze is willing to sacrifice anything, even herself, to save the future. And in the end, it's a price they both agreed upon. At any cost, after all, means at any cost. Even so, for all his resolve, for all Silver grown to understand himself and his mission, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to lose his dearest friend. This tragic story has an appropriately tragic vocal theme to accompany it, dreams of an absolution. It's sung from the perspective of a sleepless Silver, who, in place of real dreams, only has desperate visions of an absolution for his world, a reality where everyone is finally free and suffering is no more. It covers each leg of Silver's journey in its own way and has some sincerely powerful lyrics. It's notable not only for just being really, really good, but also its creative use of heavy voice modulation to help foster its surreal portrayal of endless, repetitive strife, and its deeply romantic optimism in spite all the crushing darkness. Unfortunately, all of this beauty is trapped within Silver's premiere game, Sonic 2006. If you haven't heard, Sonic 2006 is the most infamous title in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and for once there's a good reason for that. It's broken. It fights anyone who tries to enjoy it, and while it's one of my personal favorite games, for real, it's hard to overstate how much I love Sonic 06, I'm by no means the average consumer. Speaking of not being the average consumer, Silver wasn't even a particularly popular individual with people who did enjoy Sonic 06's story. Many folks found his voice strange, his physics-focused gameplay highly frustrating, and didn't really understand why there's a time-traveling fluffy guy in a Sonic game to begin with. The answer, of course, is because he's great, and his story is great. He rocks. But you'd figure general consensus would still tailor his future in the franchise a bit. Characters have been dumped for less. Yet, in spite of that, he keeps showing up. Sonic Rivals, Mario and Sonic, Free Riders, Generations, Team Sonic Racing, and most notably Sonic Forces. 
He often gets speaking roles, a remade character model, and an equal spotlight to the other side characters. You can buy toys of him at your local Target and Walmart in the year of our Lord 2022. I have no idea why. Who is buying the Silver the Hedgehog backpacks or his $10 toy car? Is it you? Who are you? I'm not complaining. I love Silver. But not only was he seemingly unpopular, but his timeline was erased in Sonic 06's finale, and presumably him along with it. Even then, when he does appear in other games, he rarely behaves like himself. He's downright goofy in Team Sonic Racing, and in Sonic Forces his dialogue is deliberately vague and inconsequential. There's almost nothing left of the original character's strong spirit, desire for justice, or sense of resolve. If he keeps coming back, some people must want him, but surely the people who want him also want the things of substance and not just his pretty face. Silver the Hedgehog is a weird guy, and he and his existence just keep getting weirder with every passing year and every new inclusion. Dreams of an Absolution plays when you use his ultimate move in the wacky kart racing game. What is even happening anymore? Hey, you made it! We're at the end of the video! Now it's time to talk about my Patreon. Did you know that if you grab certain tiers from it, you can directly influence the content I make? It's true! You can also just offer general support, too. And speaking of that support, some lovely people have already pledged. People I will list for you now. My wonderful supporters are... Ipompus, Anonymous, J, Marth Sinclair, Call Me Haley, Sam Anderson, Some Call Me Anto, Waposa, Mint Horse, Mike Hansen, and Kay Storkson. Thank you all so much for your time and thoughts, and I'll talk to you in the next video.